Today we're talking about Argentina, a country that eagerly signs up for any pre-approved credit card offer that gets dropped off at their doorstep. Ooh, this credit card says we don't have to start paying until the next election. Let me just use it to pay off all this debt that the previous administration had placed on my shoulders. Now to summarize about 5 of my Argentina economic videos in under a minute, Argentina has this nasty habit of swinging wildly from radical conservative to radical progressive back to radical conservative again, with each leader tearing up the economic system that the previous leader spent their entire administration trying to set up. You see, you'll get a conservative who comes in with a plan. All right, we're going to cut taxes, grow the economy, and well, of course, we're going to have to keep spending like before. But instead of raising taxes, we're going to take out high interest public loans and take money straight from the IMF so we can keep paying for things without raising taxes or cutting spending. Now voters, they see that and they don't love it. So the conservative loses the election and a progressive boom, kicks down the door. Now we're an independent country gonna default on all those IMF loans cause they don't control us and if we need money we're just gonna print it ourselves. I'm gonna pull out the duct tape and put together a system of price caps, subsidies and buying limits so we don't have inflation or shortages. It's a great system, J just don't touch anything. Now that system starts showing its cracks pretty quickly and guess what, maybe that conservative wasn't such a bad idea. The conservative comes in, tears down that subsidy purchase limit system, and takes out another massive IMF loan. Of course, he's paying slightly higher interest rates than the last conservative to keep that pipeline flowing. Now with all that context in mind, we begin the next chapter of our Argentine story. They had just taken out the largest loan in the IMF's history. Everyone was super optimistic about it. With $57 billion to spend, they're going to be one of the large. Uh, uh, oh, oh, he lost to a progressive, and they're going to default on that enormous loan for the ninth time. Didn't see that one coming. Who keeps approving these loans? Let me just wait for the next conservative to take power. Maybe 10th time's the charm. Based on everything I've told you so far, you might think you know what's going to happen next in this cycle. Argentina elects a progressive, powers on the money printer, and starts taping back together the policies that keep prices down and limit consumption so that there are no shortages on these artificially cheap items. After all, without all that IMF money flowing into the government, how is Argentina going to keep paying for things? Tax or print? Well, it turns out that there might be a new third option for Argentine progressives, because a new lender has entered the room. IMF giving you a little bit of trouble? How about you try something new? Take a bit of money from the Chinese. Now, there are three main players in this story. You got the IMF, you got China, and of course you can't forget you got Argentina. They're pretty important to this whole thing. Now first, the IMF because they're out $57 billion on this Argentine loan. Now in the days of COVID, that sounds like a pretty easy to dismiss number. $57 billion? What is that, the 18% tip on the actual bill? But when it comes to international organizations like the IMF, that is an amount of money worth fighting for. Now there's this strange tango right now going on between Argentina and the IMF because both sides are vying for the upper hand in this relationship. You see, the IMF, they got quite a pit of power right now because they're the monetary establishment that will actually cut Argentina alone if they want to. You want the next injection of money? Well, no one else is going to give it to you given nine defaults, but we'll give you one if you keep making payments on this one. Argentina has defaulted on their debt, but that doesn't just wave a magic wand and suddenly make it all disappear. It's still out there and both sides are currently trying to negotiate a new payment plan. Now on the other side of the coin you got Argentina, who has a lot of power in these negotiations on their own. 
because they owe the IMF so much money that if they were to stop paying completely, that would wreck the IMF's finances. If for example, half of Visa's funds are tied up in your credit card bill, I think you're going to be able to negotiate for better terms. Hashtag not financial advice. Now while these two are negotiating on a new repayment plan, you got China over here in the corner saying, forget all that. We'll overlook the fact that defaulting is currently your default position because we want to be your official go-to lender for all future financial crises. And lastly, you got Argentina themselves, which finds itself in an incredibly weird position. Remember that classic pendulum swing I mentioned at the top of the episode? Conservative comes in, borrows a bunch of money from the West, then loses to a progressive who defaults on all those loans in favor of national independence. The progressive, well then he loses to the Western debt loving conservative and we're rinsing and repeating. Now with China emerging as a viable funding alternative, a new normal has sort of emerged recently. He got the conservatives who are trying to maintain connections and cash flow with the West, while you got progressives who are eyeing the East for new cash injections, as opposed to just completely walking away from borrowing money and instead turning on the printing presses. Now the current leader, definitely a progressive, but not as radically so as some of his predecessors. He has maintained negotiations with the IMF, just sort of seems to be looking for the best deal no matter what language it's written in. Fernandez de Kirchner's bloc would prefer to adjust Argentina's western orientation while pursuing full global engagement with China. The vice president's anti-United States proclivities, on the other hand, are well known because of her previous tenure as president from 2007 to 2015. Last time, Argentina defaulted on a buttload of debt. Now with this stage set, let's get into these trilateral negotiations, because it's sort of an Argentinian standoff. Now counterintuitively, the story today begins with an agreement. On January 28th, the Argentine government and the IMF came to an agreement. We'll increase your payment window and delay collections. In return, you gotta stop printing so much money, you have to end subsidies that artificially lower prices, and you generally just have to do things to bring your deficit into check. The name of the game for the IMF, for whatever reason, is tinkering with domestic policies of foreign countries that make their economic programs a lot more fiscally conservative. We'll give desperate countries money if they implement more conservative economic reforms and follow what we tell them to do with their economy. To celebrate this IMF deal, Argentina's president went on a tour of Russia and China. Now this was a real Wait, what situation for the West? You got an agreement with the IMF. You guys get along, right? What are you doing visiting our competitor's branch? Now Argentina, people were worried, might open some sort of second credit card with China and then all of a sudden, we can kiss that IMF monopoly good pie. Could China provide the funding? This is certainly a base case, but it's in the back of people's minds. You see, China had been mentioned as a possible wildcard for Argentina because it wasn't feasible for Argentina to go it alone without the IMF. If Argentina were getting some of that money from China though, well that takes away most of the leverage the IMF has over the country. If you don't pay us, you won't have access to our next loan. We, whoa, where are you going? This became even more alarming when Argentina turned their trip into a honeymoon by joining China's One Belt One Road Trade and Infrastructure Investment Initiative. Argentina's President Alberto Fernandez is betting on China to support projects in need of financing, especially after the defeat of the 2022 budget bill which left authorities scrambling to secure funds to keep projects going. You see, with the whole IMF deal going on in the background, there were mandated cuts to that money printer and they won't give us more money. So we gotta get that infrastructure funding from somewhere. Not gonna raise taxes, so let's get China on the horn. 
Now, China signed up to a deal that would provide Argentina with $24 billion in fresh investment. But there are two key differences between Chinese cash and IMF cash. First, China isn't here to get involved in your monetary policy. Do whatever you want, they're not going to judge. In fact, China is looking at this twisted web of negotiations between the IMF and Argentina. You can only spend this much money, print this much money, borrow this much money, and they're saying, whoa, whoa, we are not touching any of that. According to a Chinese statement, this is simply China's way to help Argentina within the context of their deal with the IMF, not through another loan to replace the IMFs. Now that loan thing at the end there might sound a little weird, but that's the second major difference between Chinese money and the IMFs. You see, this money does not need to be paid back, it's not a loan, instead it's an investment. That's right, the Chinese are playing for keeps. It's really a shopping spree over there right now for Argentinian infrastructure. I'll build you a road and then plant my flag right in the middle of it. Now you can still use it though. So now you have two different financial institutions working separately with two different strategies in Argentina. The Western IMF cutting checks to the government in order to influence politics, and China in the background just sort of investing their money into building and owning Argentinian infrastructure. Now to give you a better idea of this Chinese investment approach, the benevolent Chinese Zijin Mining Company is investing hundreds of millions of dollars into developing lithium production to open up production and mining in Argentina. They will operate and control that mine while paying royalties to the local governments. Now this is particularly alarming to America and other Westerners because, like, we really wanted to do that. We were leading up to that. Come on. The IMF loans, they were just foreplay. Argentina was going to default. You can pay us with these mines. But similarly, you got the most important hydroelectric plant in Argentina and the most expensive to be financed and built by Chinese entities outside of China. China. Well, they're going to be controlling that dam and collecting all the revenue it collects, while of course paying a negotiated 12% royalty to the regional government where the dam lies. These investment projects, they're real toss-ups as to whether it's good or bad, because on one hand, Argentina gets a hydroelectric dam. Yay! Lots of consistent green energy and some jobs on top of that. Problem is, you don't own it or profit very much off of it. Now this is the new reality that Argentina finds himself in today, borrowing money from the west to find government projects and having China investing money into building Chinese projects in their backyard. It's quite the balancing act to keep both superpowers wallets wide open. For example, Argentina's president just performed the ultimate about face going from attending a BRICS conference hosted by China, whose goal was to create an alternative lending solution to the IMF, to immediately heading out to Joe Biden's America's Summit, where he presumably talked about how great the IMF is. I mean, they keep giving us money no matter how many times we pull away the football. Now this push and pull conversation is probably happening across the globe right now, as China increases their background investments and the IMF keeps handing out loans with monetary policy stipulations. If you want to learn more about the economic history of Argentina, or the specific anti-inflationary monetary printing policies of the last progressive government to really rule there. Well, I have some pretty interesting videos that cover that that I'm going to be posting in the outro. Until then, thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I'd like to thank my patrons over here for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent, nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking on that link in the description. Right here and right here are those two Argentina videos I mentioned earlier, the economic history and the ways that they were suppressing costs while printing money. If you like what you saw, give me a thumbs up, remember to subscribe and ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring. And lastly, as always, thank you for watching.